okay, a fire service may need to do what's called a strategic needs assessment. What, what do I need and absolutely need? Okay, so I look at the, I look at the demographics of my community and I say, okay, I, I've got several different types of interfaces, but let's just look at our structural type um, so we can make the determination of what our needs are. All right, in a community, now let's say um, you know a, a medium-sized community, less than 250,000 population, covering say, oh, uh, less than 100 square miles. Okay, and I have some, uh, I have some city characteristics, but not a lot. Okay, and we'll kind of explain that as we go along. Well, let's look first of all, what what is the most common you're going to have residential? Okay, so we'll look at residential. Let's look at my demographics for my residential need. Residential in this particular community, most, uh, most of my residences are less than three stories. Okay, and this is demographical data that I collect from building department, from uh, you know other information I have, and just observation. Most of my residential applications are less than three stories. Most of them are either type three or type five construction. That means I've either got ordinary or wood stick, okay? All right, so I look at that, mostly what I can do there. I know that my, my predominant resource is gonna again be my pumper. All right, so I know I'm going to need pumpers. I definitely need them. They're gonna be the backbone of my service, okay? So now we look at our commercial. Now our commercial is mostly our businesses, our mercantile, uh, you know, light, light, very light industry. Um, your banks, your stores, your, uh, you know, uh, Stop and Robs, your Walmarts, big, big box stores, things like that. Your commercial applications. Most of my commercial applications are limited to big box stores, um, you know, less than three story applications, okay? So we'll say again, we're, we're pretty much less than three stories. Some are large, like supermarkets and big box stores and shopping plazas. Maybe I have a mall, okay? Uh, you know, a, a medium-sized mall. So less than three stories. Um, again, the type of construction in this aspect uh, is probably going to be um, probably not one, but most likely type two and more than likely type three. Uh, maybe some, but mostly these two, okay? That's my type of construction. And in most of the commercial aspects, we've got to look at the age of the community. If it's a relatively new community, it's going to have sprinklers, it's going to have some of the, the, the you know, fancy bells and whistles when it comes to fire prevention. But when we look at this, we say, okay, mostly two and three, um, we'll say that we've been, we're fortunate. We've been up on the sprinklers, we've been up on the codes, so most of them have a, a good fire protection system. And then we look at, uh, you know, we, we've got heights, uh, three stories less, that type of construction. So again, my pumper is going to be my primary workhorse. And then I may need some, some ladders. Okay. Now finally, I want to look at the big thing that's going to really add on to what I need. Okay, and we're going to look at industrial because that is really where sometimes we fail to meet the needs. And I think right here, most fire departments can operate with what they have, and they can, they can you know, utilize them uh, in, in the means that they have. But when you look at the big picture things, the things like industry, we don't have emergencies there every day. But the potential, uh, the threat that you have from that uh, is, is definitely has to be considered, and you have to quantify that. You have to look at that and put some kind of a, of a, uh, a concept to it, an idea so that you can explain that to the city manager and say, well, listen, this is why I need this specialized equipment, because if this goes wrong, we need to be able to, uh, to, to protect or defend against it. Whew. Made it happen again, right? <clears throat> okay. So when we look at industrial, industrial is comprised of manufacturing, processing, agricultural, we also could have storage and distribution systems for industrial needs. Okay, so when we look at that, we say those are the areas of, of, of industry that we've got to deal with. Manufacturing, depending on what it is, is it chemicals that they're making? 
Uh, is it uh, metal, steel, or things like that? I may have rescue concerns. Uh, I might have specialized equipment or machinery. Uh, I look at that. Um, and then I look at processing. We could be talking about processing chemicals, petrochemicals. We could be processing gas. We could be processing chemicals of a, of a hazardous nature rather than an explosive nature. So I need to look at that, and that's all part of that, that strategic planning process. What am I dealing with? What are my potential uh, threats from this, and what could go wrong? And then we look at agriculture, and agriculture will include uh, the chemicals used for agricultural, pesticides, fertilizers, uh, the potential for those chemicals and their uses, and or in some cases misuses. Um, and also, uh, we look at storage and distribution of those chemicals or those products. Um, for example, in the Midwest, you often have grain elevators. Grain elevators uh, can be very dangerous and hazardous if they produce a lot of dust and there is not a dust recovery system. Uh, they're known to explode. They can produce uh, explosions. People can become entrapped uh, in the grain elevators. If they, if they fall in and they get into the grain, uh, you might have a specialized rescue situation. So there are a lot of things to consider when you have these different types of things. And then distribution systems. Uh, a distribution system, for example, petrochemicals might require rail cars, uh, which is putting those rail cars transversing through the tracks of your residential or your commercial areas. So you have to be concerned and, and understand the threats posed there. And a lot of this we'll cover when we get into uh, actually fire prevention uh, practices when we talk about uh, strategic planning for community disaster response. But I just want you to understand that these are the things that you have to consider when you're putting together uh, proposals for what your fire department service delivery is. And these are, these are considerations as well. One thing I didn't cover and, and you have to consider as well, it's in it maybe limited areas, is mining. Uh, you may be in areas where you have the potential for ground collapse, which would then place a requirement for you to have specialized resources to respond to, uh, to a collapse or be able to handle uh, a situation like that. So all of these things are, are, are parts of what you're going to consider in that, in that strategic plan. Okay now, so I've identified the types of apparatus I need. Right, and, I, and I'm just kind of staying focused on this part, one part of it. It's a whole big picture. You're going to do the same process for determining manpower. You're going to do the same process for, for determining equipment needs, uh, specialized protective clothing, uh, respirators, uh, rescue equipment, things like that. It is the same process. It's, a, it's basically a process of identifying what the requirements are, what the needs are, and then identifying what you need to, you know, to, to be able to meet those needs. We're just going to stick basically with apparatus. And we said we, want, we need pumpers, we need light ladders, we need tenders, we need brush trucks, and we need some specialized apparatus. Okay, so how much do I need? How many do I need to put in place? And again, you also have to figure the staffing that goes along with it. So, okay, how do I come up with this? Well, we have something at our resources that we can use called benchmarking. Well, what is a benchmark? Uh, it includes some video resources and some information about benchmarking in, in the business uh, world and what it does is it basically compares your organization to other organizations. Well we really don't need to compare ourselves to other organizations. We look at our organization independently um, and we can say that like communities of our size and shape may have you know similar circumstances but they're not going to be identical. So another thing that we do with our benchmarking is we look at what we've done in the past. What are we going, what are we doing right now and, and what do we anticipate that growth to be? So benchmarking looks at a couple of different things. First of all, we want to look, number one, at our overall responses. Okay? And this is where you're going to add some ammunition to your request for equipment. You look at your overall responses. Now, this is just a big number. Say in a community we're running, uh, say, 25,000 calls a year for service. Okay? Okay. That's good. But are they medical calls? Are they fire calls? Are they false alarms? Are they calls for assistance? What are we dealing with? So we need to really look at that 25,000 calls and we need to get a breakdown. And, and that benchmark is where we're going to turn around and uh, essentially identify or, or categorize each of those types of calls. So we're going to look at fire calls, EMS, alarms, um, 
public assistance calls, um, hazmat, um, traffic accidents. Okay. Well, what have we done there? Well, look in your NIFRS. We have 321 or 322. EMS call with injuries, uh, non-traffic accident, EMS call resulting from a traffic accident. Fire, your one series. All right. Alarms, 700 series. Okay. Hazardous materials, 400 series. Traffic accidents, 322. Okay. So, using my NIFRS, I can populate this information based on those codes. Okay? So let's say our breakdown at the end of the year we ran uh, 18,000 EMS calls. Uh, we ran 5,000 fire calls. Uh, we ran a thousand alarms and we ran less than 500 um, hazmat calls and we ran about uh, 1,500 traffic accidents and the re majority of the remaining calls uh, will say less than less than 500 um, calls for personal assistance or public assistance. Okay, so we have our breakdowns. So we look at what do we need, okay? And, and, that, and, and again, I'm, I'm I got EMS in there and we didn't do that because we didn't really look at our EMS when we broke did the breakdown. We did structurally strictly structure fires. But we're just going to look at that data and we say, okay, we've run 5,000 structure fires. Okay? Now let's take this data even further and look at how many of them uh, were, you know, room and contents. How many of them were, uh, you know, uh, residential versus industrial versus commercial. And those are also codes that you're going to have as far as, you know, we fill out NIFRS. It's important we put that information on there as to what the occupancy was so we can track that data. So we get this benchmark based on the number of responses. Okay? That's good. We, we identify that we're running 5,000 fire calls and, and they're bona fide fire calls, not just, you know, uh, uh, a fire alarm or something like that. We've got that data. 